Hi everyone, this is the continuation of testing the uh, floor device, if we're to call it that. Um, on my first test, uh, I had basically built uh, two of these uh, magnet rotors. These are neo magnets that I cut in half and flipped so that half is one pole and the other half is the other pole. And um, it had quite a bit of torque and I wanted then to further test uh, what floor uh, ge magnet geometry was testing and it was a rectangular magnet like that with another rectangular magnet you know going uh, turning this way but uh, I found that that didn't really have much torque and I'm quite sure that the advantage would be to really have a full uh, magnet uh, in a circle like that and uh, Floor has concluded that because he has recently shared that in, in, in the uh, topic so um, but uh, getting ring, ma ring magnets that are magnetized uh, half and half like that uh, are very rare and um, that is the uh, difficulty with that and I wanted to experiment with that particular geometry and this is what I've come up with. So basically you just take a uh, steel pipe, this is a three inch steel pipe, and you insert many small magnets in your steel pipe. So there you go, you see a uh, half inch uh, square uh, magnet which is just one eighth thick, but it could be thicker and uh, but you'd want it in very small segments and basically you make half the this side in one pole and then you flip and make the other half the other pole and basically I've made that uh, device and there it is there so there is a ring magnet and what you'd want to have as well is like probably a longer magnet like that meaning that uh, this dimension would be longer giving you more surface area and giving you more torque in exchange. So there is a half and half uh, pole uh, ring magnet that I've made with small magnets. And on this side here, on the activation and disactivation of the device, I have a diametrically uh, magnetized uh, half inch uh, magnet here. Uh, this is something that I had on hand that I could play with. and. Um, this is what I'm going to be pulling, uh, pushing in and pulling out uh, and uh, then this side here delivers torque and we've got a chart on the other side and basically this configuration is very very efficient and I knew that and I think Floor knows that as well and uh, but uh, now today I'm going to uh, show you some results with that um, this could be made in a rotary uh, device and as a matter of fact if I uh, quickly move this uh, in and out I can get uh, rotation uh, just by you know having the right uh, timing and uh, I might show that in this video but maybe this video will get kind of long um, so there it is uh, the other thing too is I'm thinking is this is the first test I'm going to do with this I'm going to build it in another uh, way as well you'll see that actually I'll be using that center magnet which this magnet by the way should be actually more like uh, inch and a half if not two inch uh, getting closer and closer to uh, these magnets here filling the gap and that would deliver like tremendous amount of torque uh, basically if, uh, if I had that but unfortunately uh, I don't have it and I'd have to make or make another ring like the same way I made this one this is just for testing to see what can be done and the results are, are very good and uh, there is improvement so that's why I'm uh, sharing this the other thing that uh, I have an idea of is instead of having this magnet go in and out I'm thinking of having shielding going in and out and the idea is here is uh, Floor's basic uh, device and the effect is just this basically when you rotate this magnet it, it, it goes back right so there, there is the, the torque on this dimension here you see it, it returns so if I put this little spacer here and I put a shielding so here's a very thin uh, two, uh, two or three uh, transformer lamination if I put that over top of that magnet and I put the magnet back here and now you can see I can turn that magnet and there is no effect so uh, that's where I'm going to be going next is just uh, studying of inserting a shielding in between 
uh, the two magnets and just to be able to rotate the other uh, 180 degrees or it's a little more than 180 degrees uh, I guess it'd be about 200 degrees because I'm getting uh, with this configuration uh, torque at 160 degrees and that's what we're going to be uh, showing you the results of today so this is the uh, way that I'm uh, suggesting to, uh, to go uh, to uh, be able to turn that magnet the rest of the distance would be instead uh, just inserting a uh, shielding and making a neutralization between the two magnets and now it would continue on its way. I have other ideas, I'm not going to share them right now, uh, I'm going to build that and uh, so things are looking uh, better and better. So here uh, what I've done for this uh, particular test is uh, I'm utilizing 180 degrees here of activation so there here I bring the arm up it's like it's nothing it's like nothing to bring it in and out um, so what I have done as well since this is like a foot pound uh, measurement here I've reduced it I made it a three inch measurement so I made this exactly a three inch from my center and this is where I now attach my scale instead of pulling it up here because I get no reading uh, pulling it up at that dimension there but pulling it up here on this uh, three inch dimension I'm getting some good numbers on the scale and I can get some better more accurate data so that's what I've done here and on the other side here where the torque is being delivered I've also right now what I have is just a little device here that's just holding down the the arm here and that is where I would hook the scale up that spring is just holding it so that when you activate it it doesn't swing away so uh, this is the beginning of the torque cycle here and uh, so I hook up my scale at this side here which is exactly three inches as well from my center of my uh, torque shaft and uh, like I say I have it going uh, actually it goes beyond it goes up to this point here which is basically another four inches which gives you uh, 160 degrees rotation of torque and uh, this is the uh, results which I will post on the over unity forum topic which you can get a link to go and see this uh, at the topic uh, in the bottom of this uh, video in the description box there's a link for that so here is the uh, engaging so these are all in grams 125 grams so as you see I'm getting higher numbers and my scale works with 5 gram increments so that's why it's always rounded to 5 grams and basically uh, once it gets to this point here it's it's floating it's it's just it's unmeasurable my scale can't measure it so that's why uh, we have basically zeros here on the last uh, two uh, on the last 10 degrees so these are five degrees increments so we start at five degrees 10 degrees 15 you're getting the idea here uh, 100 uh, basically 80 degrees and this is the, this is the disengaging uh, side here so that is only uh, calculated once the uh, whole uh, complete stroke of 160 degrees has been done then I go back here and then now you're you know you're attaching the scale there and now calculating this and that is what I calculated on the uh, return so basically um, uh, I've also reversed them so basically this would be the 10 grams uh, starting from this point here so and uh, this point here would be the starting point from here uh, so it's just to keep it uh, equal so that's why they kind of match and what's the interesting part about this is this is the first time I've gotten uh, such a very very close uh, numbers so it means this is a very balanced uh, system so we have 70 grams uh, to engage the d in average to engage the device and uh, 67 grams uh, in average to disengage the device so this is all the uh, torque uh, gram uh, the data so basically starting at uh, five degrees and on and on and on and obviously you see down to 160 degrees so there is all the uh, force in grams at the three inch dimension and this was just an error I had to jump over here and I just forget all that so this is a con continuation here so we have a total here of 135 grams 
um, over 160 degrees of distance. So this is twice the distance than the input. So basically all I've done is multiplied that by two. So we have uh, our total here of these two figures is 137 uh, grams here. And then, uh, so I multiplied the uh, output by two because we have twice the distance. Uh, 270 grams, uh, basically now over 180 degrees. So we have a comparison. And now we take our input uh, grams and we deduct that from our uh, output. And we're left with 133 grams, which is the most uh, I've uh, been left over so far. And meaning that uh, basically uh, without a re-engaging side, because that's going to be studied later, uh, I'm not really interested in that data for right now. I know that that could actually be negated to close to, to nothing. And you'll see in time that'll come to that. Um, so we have 133 uh, grams left over, meaning that on this particular um, test, we're at 49%, pretty well close, a little over 49%. We're getting close to like 50% uh, over uh, extra. So that is really good compared to our previous test, which was like 31% over. And then this is like the re-engaging uh, side here. If I calculate re, going backwards, pulling the uh, output lever all the way back, I was left with 10% over still. So this uh, definitely is looking really great to see uh, the numbers going up. That's the first time I've always been in the 30% range on all my previous tests. And now to see it go at 49%, uh, this is great, and this is the uh, idea that I'm uh, in direction that I'm going in and uh, thought that uh, you guys might uh, be interested in that. Now let me show you a bit about how shielding works. Uh, this, you saw it on this particular uh, geometry here. And right here I put a little device together. I have two magnets in opposition. So basically if I slide this close here, or press, and you can obviously see there's a good pressure and that is like taking off. So all we need is basically a little shielding in between the two and everything changes. And uh, here is a little piece of shielding which is two uh, thin transformer laminations. I'll stick it on this uh, magnet here because I have nothing to hold it in and bring it in between the two but the idea is they don't stick on the magnet, they just float it's inserted in between the two magnets and when you have the right gap which we would, we would have on this particular configuration we would have an exact gap uh, you can easily bring this in and out uh, there is though a, a pull to bring it uh, out but there's a suction to bring it in so it negates itself um, now let me show you basically here with with hardly any uh, push I can bring those two together so that's like there's nothing, there's nothing holding it, uh, you know, pushing it apart. It's neutralized at this point. And that's exactly what happens when you have your, um, your shielding uh, perfectly calibrated for the strength of the magnetic flux. You can get a cancellation happening just like as, you know, as you're witnessing here that basically then you have nothing, no force. And uh, right here is like the neutral point. You know, I know it sticks together, but right there, that is the neutral point right there. They don't, you know. And then further out here, it'll start pushing a little bit. As you saw, it pushes it out. But nothing compared to, <laughs> to this. This here just pushes it, you know, completely out. Plus, you feel the tremendous pressure here when you're trying to hold them together. It's like very, very strong. So there you go, that's a direction that I'm uh, going and I uh, thought uh, you may be interested. Bye now.